Baruchem Aboim B'Shem Irgin Shir Terah Moses Boston. I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's Shir, all the men here in the main show with us, and all the women upstairs and downstairs, and everyone listening in on the phone and tuning in through the live broadcast. Baruchem Aboim. I'd like to remind Aylam that Irgin Shir Terah's annual dinner is coming up in just a couple of short weeks. Two short, two short, well, two was a couple, two weeks. Um, perfect time to show you a curse of Taiv to Irgin Shir Terah and to the Rabbanim Mushirim we've enjoyed. We're putting an ad in the dinner journal and have a chedling and a botzus tar of Irgenshir tar throughout the year worldwide. Call Irgenshir tar at 718-851-8651 or email tapecenter at yeshivanet.com for this great schus. You can also make use of the ad blanks or the envelopes here on the table. I'd like to give a big yeshakach to Mr. and Mrs. Ellie Goldbaum for sponsoring tonight's shir. I'd like to give a big yeshakach to Anonymous for sponsoring tonight's shir. Tonight we have the cover to have with us once again Rabbi Yonatan Rieti, Senior Lecturer, Gateway Seminar, discuss the topic of I was only kvetching, how does Hashem view my complaining? It's my cover to call on Rabbi Rieti for tonight's drusha. Good evening. Can you all hear clearly? A special thank you to Rabbi Bould for inviting me to share with you. And uh, I would like to add that uh, this presentation is also Le'ilu Nishmas, my mother, Aleha Shalom, Habiba Bat Salcha, whose yurt side is next week. And also a special Le'ilu Nishmas, Rivka Bas Eliyahu, who was Nifteres uh, just last week. Should be a Zuchus to the Neshamas Amen. The presentation is entitled, I was only kvetching, I was only complaining. What's the big deal? And how does Hashem view our complaints? So I'm going to start off with a, a simple marshal, a metaphor. Uh, parents are very wealthy. Um, for the birthday of their 17-year-old son, something he's really been dreaming of for many years, he gets an envelope, and inside are car keys, if they still exist, or a, an equivalent of, of such. And he goes outside very excited. He can't believe it. This is amazing. Just turned 17, his parents are giving him what he's always wanted. A few seconds later, he storms back into the house. He is so angry. They can't believe it. What's the matter? They bought him a Mercedes. What is the matter? He said... You knew I wanted a Ferrari! Now, here's my question to you. Pretend you're the parents or close friends of the parents and they're telling you this story. Their 17-year-old is gifted a modern model of a Mercedes and it's a sports model and he comes storming back in complaining he wanted a Ferrari. What's your response? Any suggestions? Unappreciative. Unappreciative. Ingrate, spoiled, if you don't want it, don't take it. Question, what do the parents owe their 17-year-old? Zero. Okay, what could this be a metaphor for? Does God owe me anything? He doesn't owe me anything. Okay, so now let's get to the, the, the kvetching. Where does kvetching really take place? Where does complaining take place? In my pinky, my elbow, my stomach, my kneecap, where? For those still awake. In my head. Which part of my head? In my? In my brain. In my? What does my brain do? It thinks. Oh, so kvetching is actually, it starts as a thought. Is that right? It's really a thought. What is anger? Where's the origin of anger? It's also in my mind? Okay, where's the origin of love? The mitzvah of Hashem. Which part of the body am I commanded to love a Kodesh Baruch with? Bechol Levavacha, with all your thoughts. That's the title from Rabbi Victor Miller. Spoken about it before, I'm not going to go into it in detail now. 
Oh, these are mitzvahs of the mind. Where does kvetching take place? Oh, it's a thought. How long is a thought? How long is the life of a thought? It could be a, a split second or it could be. It could, I could think about this for a long time. Could I analyze this for a long time? Oh, so the life of a thought is as long as I think it. How far am I away from not thinking it and switching to a different thought? Split second. How far am I away from another thought? I'm one thought away. Question. Where does the mitzvah of teshuva take place? Where does it start? What's the origin? It's a hirhur of teshuva. Is that right? A hirhur of teshuva is a thought. One of the biggest misunderstandings of reality is kvetching. It's one of the most fundamental... I, I would even put it like this. One of the greatest problems we have in society today is possibly too much thinking. I think too much. I think the next biggest problem is that I don't think enough. Meaning, I don't think enough about what I should be thinking. And I think way too much about what I should not be thinking. Well, what should I be thinking? Well, it's interesting. Tariq Mitzvahs provides for us a list of mitzvahs, shatalei believe, which depend on the mind. Hilchas Deus, says Rabbi Victor Miller, means the laws of thinking. There are 51 mitzvahs, according to Sefer Haredim, that are tali believe. Emuna, where does that take place? Where does the mitzvah, the second one in the Aseris Adibrois, Lo yi'elachai Elohim acherim al panai, don't have any other powers in front of my faces. Where does that take place? Oh, it's my mind. Oh, interesting. I should not follow my thoughts or whatever my eyes report. Don't trust everything I think and see. Where does that take place? It's all taking place in my mind, in my thoughts. And how far away am I from switching that thought? Make a U-turn. Change my mind. I'm always one thought away. So now let's get into kvetching. Let's try and understand from HaKadosh Baruch Hu's perspective, what is, what, what is his view on kvetching? So ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, wherever you are, question, where's the first time, not in the Torah Shebikhtav, but the Torah Shebaal Peh on the Torah Shebikhtav, where do we see the first time that kvetching takes place and Hashem, Hashem's response to it? Before Adam and Rishon, that's in Perak Gimel, we're going to get to that. Where I'm asking actually in Perak Aleph. Excellent. Excellent. The moon. What was the moon's complaint? Rabbi Shalom, how can one king wear two crowns? What's Hashem's response? You're right. So therefore, you will be smaller than the sun before you were... Uh, same size, and what were you? You were also a sun. You were also bright and shining. But now you're going to be reduced in size, and what else happened? Lost his light completely. So not only did he not get what was behind the question, but he was reduced and lost what he was. And now is only a reflection ever of the sun's light. Never shining light of itself. Interesting. Watch the pattern. Where's the next time we see a complaint? This time it's in the Torah Shebikhtav itself. Adam Arishan is given the opportunity to do Teshuvah. Hashem asks him a question. Um, are you embarrassed about your being unclothed because you ate from the tree I asked you not to eat from? And that was just an invitation for him to have one word. Khatati. I made a mistake. That's the Medrash Agata. We mentioned it last year, I believe. If he had said that one word, Hashem would have been Mechalim, would have forgiven him. But instead he said, Ha'isha, that woman, Hashem Natata Imadi, that you gifted to stand by me. And Rashi tells us straight away, 
you're using the matana that I gave you. And now you're, you're, you're getting out of responsibility by blaming me? Azar Kutzba. I could never say this on Adam Rishon. Chazal do. Gemara in Avodazar, Dav Hey tells us in this context he was called a Kafoi Taiva. Kafoi means Kava, as in the same Lashon as Kaifa. He was a Kafoi, Kafoi Taiva, an ingrate. I, didn't, I don't owe you anything, but I gave you a, a wife, a partner to stand by you, to work with you, and instead of you being grateful, you turn it around. And you blame her, Hashem, me, for giving you her instead of taking responsibility. And what's the response of a Kaddish Baruch Hu in the big picture? What happened to Adam Rishon? Was he reduced? He was reduced in size. And what, else, and what, what, what did he lose out on? Lifespan. Lifespan. Instead of living for how long? Forever. Forever. Oh. And the whole of the Bria is redefined. Mortality comes into, death comes into the world. Let's fast forward. Where's the next complaint that you're going to find in the Torah? So it could be if you really are mine, you'll find more. I'm just jumping to a three-word kvetch. How bad could a three-word kvetch be? So fast forward, chapter 25. And Rivka Imenu is expecting. It's been many years of trying, and at last she has a. She's, and during the pregnancy, the pain is so great. Chazal tell us it's also the Medrash Agada that she was she was a Navia, and she knew that she was going to have twelve Shvatim. She was destined to have all twelve sons through Yitzhak Avinu. And in three words, she said, Lama ze anoichi. For what do I need this? Those three words cost her what? HaKadosh Baruch said, okay, you, you, you're going to complain about your pregnancy and the pain? Fine. I'll take the ze, which Chazal tell us is gematria, Zion, hey, is 12, 7 and 5, is 12. The 12 times that you were going to be pregnant, this is your first and last. You will not have the Shvatim. What was destined was taken away from her. A three word kvetch, Rabbeinu Shleilam. What, what, what chance is there for me? Fast forward. Yaakov Avinu has a six word kvetch. And for the six words that he said, Ma'at v'ra'im, hayu shnei chayei shanai. No, ma'at v'ra'im, hayu. Any bali kara here? Yemei shnei chayei. Thank you. Few and bad were the days of the years of my life. This was in response to Parai, who asked him. It's kind of an odd question. How old are you? Now, in the, in the, in the defense of Yaakov Avinu, it happens to be the Ramban and the Chizkuni and Rabbeinu Bachia uh, all offer the following. Parai saw that as soon as Yaakov Avinu came to Mitzrayim, what happened to the famine? The stopped. stopped the Varav. The entire famine terminated. And now he was interested in Yaakov Avinu staying in Mitzrayim. When Yaakov Avinu arrives at the palace and he looks at Yaakov Avinu's face, he sees such an old, ancient, frail human being, he is shocked and he becomes immediately concerned. Oh my gosh, how old, how much longer have you got? And Yaakov Avinu only said six words. Don't worry, I'm really meant, uh, I'm, I'm younger than I look and I've got some more life to go, I believe, but but ma'at v'ra'im, hayu yimei shnei chayai. My days have been few and bad. Those are the days of the life of my life. So Kaddish Baruch says, and this the Chizkuni brings the Medrash. Yaakovino, I don't understand. I saved you from Lavan. 
you were there for over 20 years. Then, when you leave Lavan and return to Eretz Canaan, I save you from your brother Esav, who hates you forever. And then, in Shechem, your daughter is taken and abused, but I returned her to you. And then you lost your favorite son, Yosef. I returned him to you after over two decades. And then when you're asked how old you are, you say, Ma'at v'ra'im? Says a Kaddish Baruch Hu, I'm going to count every single one of those letters in the six words. They add up to 20 letters. I'm going to add on the Nakudais, the 13 Nakudais. The 20 letters and the 13 Nakudais adds up to 33. And for each one of those items, I'm taking off one year of your life. Is a six word fetch worth it? Yes or no? Let's fast forward. Just trying to get a context here of where the Torah defines Hashem's attitude, so to speak, Kaviyachal, to my complaining. Hashem owes me nothing. Period. So we've looked at some individual kvetching. Let's fast forward to the national kvetching. Where's the first national kvetch? of Klal Yisrael, Rahman al We just came out of Mitzrayim. We witnessed 12, 10, 10 plagues and, it's, and the splitting of the sea. And uh, we were only three days from all the miracles of the Yamsuf. And we are starting to get tired, but more than anything, thirsty. Water! Water! We need water! That is a legitimate request, yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. So what was the taina that Hashem had for their kvetching? So comes along, the apostle can tell us, Vayilainu ha'am, sorry, Vayilainu ha'am al Moshe. The nation complained against Moshe Rabbeinu Lema. Ma nishte, what should we drink? What was the taina? What, what, what was wrong with that? Says Rashi, quoting the Mechilta. Hashem saw Ra'a Kashi Arpan. What's Kashi Arpan? If I don't want to have a communication with you, what do I, what do, I do to show you that I'm not Gairus you? Just turn my head. Stiff-necked. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not listening. Like, Kilu, you're not there. It's, it's, it's a very... It's a, it's, in England, you'd say it's rude. <laughs> it's not polite. Uh, it's chutzpahdik. Says Rashi, quoting the Mechilta, They didn't ask Moshe Rabbeinu. They didn't take counsel with Moshe Rabbeinu with a beautiful Lashen. And what would that Lashen be? Says the Mechilta, Request for us, There was nothing wrong in the actual... Content of the request. Water, we need, can't live without water. The Nisayan, which Rashi quotes the, past, the end of that pasuk, for Sham Nisahu, there Hashem tested them to see how they would ask. Would it be Belashan Yafe or would it be Magirli? Where's the water? Vayilainu. They were complaining. Complaints don't work as a form of communication but even before you get there complaining is a misunderstanding of reality reality Hashem owes me nothing everything I have is a pure gift and therefore complaining almost really never has a context where it's justified the way Rashi is explaining based on the Mechilta What's missing here is Lash and Yafe. Ask Hakarish Baruch Hu for Rachamim that we should have Mayim Lishtois. That's nothing wrong with that, but ask nicely. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a generation of Chutzpah Yiske. That is a reality. Does that part of me, does that exempt me as a father or a grandparent or an uncle or a teacher from asking nicely to our children? The answer is no. Why? There's one word missing in your request. Oh, please. 
Is please really such a problem? What is the problem when please is missing? It's, it, it's not, I owe you nothing. You're my child. And please is all the difference because it switches it from Magili and a complaint, Ki'ilu, you owe me, or this is supposed to come to me, I'm supposed to have this. It switches it in one moment from a complaint to a Bakasha, Beloshan Yafe. That's all it is. It's such a simple switch. And how far am I? If a complaint is a thought that comes out my mouth or in my body language, how far am I from switching to the next thought? And the answer is, I'm always ever one thought away from what I'm thinking now. And so no matter what I'm stuck in, my anger, my frustration with the traffic, with the kids in this classroom, that I'm, I just can't take it anymore, or my coworker, or it's my wife, or it's my husband, whoever it is that I'm frustrated or angry with, I'm only ever one thought away from switching from the complaint to Loshan Yafe, a beautiful language of Bakasha, or silence, or ignoring the insult. Let's, let's go to Kvetch number two, national Kvetch number two. They got the water, yeah, but, but uh, there's a price for it. Uh, unfortunately, there's a build-up. What we're going to see is there's a build-up where eventually it comes to the last kvetch and uh, it all comes, everything comes cum crumbling down on us and we're still paying the price from that last kvetch. You, you, you follow? There's, a, there's an accumulation. So number two, national kvetch number two, was, uh-oh, we've run out of matzah. Now, it wasn't exactly, uh, well, I guess it was... <laughs> We, we, we ran out of, no, we ran out of the matzah. Now what's going to be? You know, the matzah lasted from when we left Mitzrayim till now. It's uh, approximately 30 days. What's going to be? We ran out of matzah. You never heard that on a, a Pesach program, but you can imagine if it ever happened, what are we going to eat? And this is in, the previous kvetch was in, in Perak Tesvav. This is still in Tes, this is now in Tes Science. So we're only one Perak away. This is, you're watching... I'm not saying the peric is always is chronologically in sequence time-wise, but over here it happens to be fairly accurate. We're going from one fetch to the other, and somehow or other, watch the pattern where we're not learning the lesson. Even though Hashem is giving us the water and is giving us food, it doesn't mean that we are missing out on a huge opportunity to turn the fetch around into a pakasha. Whether it's a tefillah, which we'll look at in a few moments, or whether it's benadam chaveray, instead of it being a complaint, let me ask: What can we do to make this right? What can we? What can we do? What can I do to improve the marriage? What can I do to improve the relationship? Whether it's this marriage, whether it's my child, or my my boss, or my my uh, career. So by Yiloinu kol adas bnei Yisrael al Moshe v'al Aharon by Midbar, now the whole nation is complaining against Moshe Benu and Aaron in the Midbar. And Akash Baruch Hu, the, the Pasuk says, tells us, We run out of matzah. If only we had died in Mitzrayim, where we had a plate of meat. And we were eating bread to satisfaction. You instead took us out of Mitzrayim, El Amid Barazer to this desert, Lahamis Es Hakol Hakahal Azer Barav, to kill us all with hunger. What does that sound like to you? Loshan Bakasha, Beloshan Yafe, or is this Oive? This is a national fetch. And a Kaddish Baruch Hu, why does he? let us go three days without water. That's a long time. Why does he go, why do he let the matzah run out? Why? So the Pasuk tells us, Leman anasenu hayelech betoirasi imloi. I'm doing this as a test to see, will you go in my Torah? What is my Torah? How will I respond to the Nisayan? Will it be, Rabbi Shalom? I'm making a bakasha. I need rachamim from you. I'm missing out on the life force, be it actual water as a life force, actual food, parnasa, 
or be it something of much greater value. Help me, Rabbi Shalalam, to have a healthy mind, a healthy mindset in this marriage, a healthy thought in my relationship to this difficult child, to the pressure of my Parnassah. Instead of it being a kvetch, Hashem's asking me, the reason I'm holding you back from the water and the, and, and the lechem is leman en asenu, in order that I will test it, the nation. Hayelech betoirasi im loy. Will they go in the way of my Torah? Emuna. Have I demonstrated enough emuna, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in the last ten makais? Were you impressed by splitting of the sea? Were you impressed by the final total drowning of the Egyptian army? The last 30 years, did you have to, what to drink? Uh, last 30 days, sorry. What, did you have what to eat? Oh, yeah, the, the, the matzah lasted till now? Oh, so says the Kaddish Baruch Hu, have I got a track record of taking care of you? Did I keep my promise to, to Avram Avinu when I told him, your child will be Ba'aretz Lulahem Arba Me'oiz Shana. And Yitzhak was born on the 15th of Nisan in the year 2048. And count 400 years later, and it comes out, Tesvav Nisan, 2448. And what event took place on that day? Yitzhak Mitzrayim. So says the Kodesh Baruch Hu, did I keep my promise to the century? To the year, to the month, to the day. Yitzhak Avinu was born at Chatzai Sayyim. That's when the Malachim made a sirita, a scratch on the wall, and told Sari Menu, when the sun hits this line next year at midday, you will be with a child. And Yitzhak Avinu was born at Chatzai Sayyim, and Klal Yisrael went out from Yitzhak Mitzrayim, Be'etzem Hayamazeh. Did I keep my promise to the hour? So if you're missing out for a few hours of water or bread, hold out. I'm not, I'm not here to starve you or to make you lose out on anything. I will always take care of you. I'm only inviting you to ask me, Beloshan Yafe, with Rachamim. Let's move forward. Kvetch number three, national kvetch number three, uh-oh, let's complain about water again. Where one parak later, parak yud zayin, a very, very painful parak, pasuk base, v'yarev ha'am im the, the, the nation now started up, argued with Moshe Rabbeinu v'yoyimru, and they said, tenu lanu mayim, give us water. Aive, I just don't get it. Why can't I say please? Belosh and Yafer. Now, what's Moshe Rabbeinu's immediate response? Ma tarivun imadi. Why are you starting a ganza sechsuch with me? Ma tenasun is Hashem. What are you starting up with Hashem for? And this is really, this is Moshe Rabbeinu giving us Musa right between the eyes. When I'm complaining, who is the real target? of my complaint. Here I am, a from Jew, and I subscribe to the claim, Hakol Bidei Shemaim. Chutz! The only thing that I, I agree is not in my hands, is what I think. Will I include you, Rabbi Shalom, in my Yirat Shemaim, in my choices, which is going to take place in the next thought. So comes along the Torah, and Moshe Benu wants me to understand that when I'm complaining to Moshe Rabbeinu, unfortunately, what am I really saying? What am I really saying? When I'm complaining, what am I really saying? When I'm complaining about my wife, my husband, my children, my Parnassa, what am I really complaining about? I'm really complaining to the Rabbeinu Shalai. You know what, Rabbeinu Shalai, let, let me help you with this. If you were to consult with me, let me explain how I think you should be running my life. But that's, that's not reality. Complaining is a misunderstanding of reality. Hashem is only good. I, I don't see it. Well, that's because he's asking me to switch from complaining to a different thought, which is one thought away. A bakasha. Belosh and Yafeh. It's not more complicated than that. 
And yet the Torah is recording very clearly the ramifications of my kvetching. Because one verse later, one pasuk later, Oi, vayavoy Amalek, v'yilachem im Yisrael b'refidim, comes along Amalek and wages war against us in Rafidim. We just came out of Mitzrayim. So we see an immediate correlation between my complaining, because, Akadosh Baruch are you with us or not? And Hashem's answer is, you, you mean to say that unless I constantly split the sea and do makos right in front of your face, you're not going to trust that I'm going to take care of you? Did we learn the lesson? Let's move to Kvetch number four. This is not a Kitrug Has for Shalom. Has for Shalom. We're just, trying to, we're just trying to create the context of what Kvetching is really about. And when we recognize a Kvetch is a thought. My complaint is a thought. My anger is really a thought in the moment. My sinner is a thought in the moment. Lotisna etachicha bilvavecha. Says Rabbi Victor Miller of Blessed Memory. Don't hate your brother in your thoughts. We have a massive misunderstanding that my feeling of anger and my feeling of sinner, which can be very real and very deep and very intense, is a feeling. And that's a misunderstanding. Because the feeling we call sinner is actually thought. 100% of my life. And since it's a thought, how far am I away from the next thought? One thought away. Means as soon as I catch myself thinking negative about you, Hashem is asking me, please do Chazara, Perik Yutes, Pasuk Yud Zayn, I believe, in Pasha's Kadoshim, please do Chazara at least once a year, uh, maybe even a little bit more once in a while, or uh, by the time you hit Mishnayas, you've already finished Tanakh a few times, and time you get to Gemara, you know this Pasuk back and forth, so it says a Kaddish Baruch please, as soon as you catch yourself out, thinking negative about other people, go to the next thought or ignore the sinner because it's not reality. Is this making sense? Let me share with you how powerful this really is. The next Pasuk in the Torah, we're still in Parshish Kedoshim. I'm just I'm giving you a, a quick synopsis of why, why we're making a big deal out of understanding how Kaddish Baruch Hu looks at complaining because complaining is really the ex is exactly synonymous with Moitzi Shemra, Loshon Hara, Sinas Chinam, Machlekes. There is almost literally no difference because every single one of those is really a thought in my mind about why I don't agree with you. And that's not a problem. The question becomes, how am I going to disagree with you? With or without respect? With or without name-calling? With or without... Or without Comparisons. You're just like your mother! And I start beating you up verbally as though, what's that got to do with what we're talking about? And I get angry and start putting your mother down and putting you in the same category as my perception of who your mother is. And all of a sudden I brought her in and you are now going to pull out your list of my weaknesses and crimes and mistakes and inconsistencies. And you might even have a lot better memory than I do for your mistakes. You might have a lot better memory about my mistakes than I do of yours, and now it's all spiraling down. And comes along Kaddish Baruch Hu and wants me to know I'm always only one thought away from changing how I feel. Because my feelings are not caused by circumstance or people. They are thoughts in the moment of what I'm thinking about that person. I can blame you and say you triggered me off, you make me mad, but let me ask you honestly. Has anyone actually gone inside your brain and pressed the mad button? Ever? Has anyone actually crawled inside and goes, goes and touches my anger button? Frustrating, but the, the traffic drives me crazy. It's, tra it's not the traffic that's driving me crazy. 
It's what I'm thinking about, the traffic that's driving me crazy. Because have you ever been in traffic, but you are enjoying the company of the person sitting next to you, and it's very stimulating, and you don't notice the time go by? Have you ever been in a traffic jam where you're actually happy that it's taking longer because you're enjoying this conversation with this person? It might be even on the phone. Yes or no? So is it the traffic that's making me mad? Or is it what I'm thinking that's driving me crazy? And one of the biggest problems I think we're experiencing in this generation is too much thinking. And that creates such a big Nassoyan for me. Because I think so much about the marriage, the children, my teenagers, my career, my health, my finances. My boss, my co-worker, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law. And the more I think and think and think and think, and comes along Kaj Baku and tells me, Lotikaim. That's a very, very deep, very, very, Nukama is very deep. Lotikaim. Wow, that's a heavy one. The Lotitoyer. And don't hold a grudge. Don't take revenge. Lotito, Rashi tells us, Gemara Yuma Daf Chaf Gimel tells us all about the mitzvah of Natira. Natira is when I'm, in English we say holding a grudge. Natira is Lashon Shmira, says Rashi. I'm Shomer, I'm guarding what you did wrong to me. I'm remembering it. I'm keeping it filed in my memory and I bring it forth. And claims the Torah, I want you to be in control of number one, Nakama, number two, Natira. Don't remember other people's faults. Whoa. That's heavy. I have, to, I, have to, I have to speak to my therapist about that one. Oh my gosh, really? I'm not supposed to be bringing back into my, the front of my mind all the stuff that people have said and done to me? Ladies and gentlemen, what are the next words in the Torah? Same pasuk. Ve'ahavta l'reacha kamecha. Love your neighbors yourself. Love people like you love you. What? What's the obvious question over here? If you were standing next to Moshe Rabbeinu, as a Kaddish Baruch who's dictating this Pasuk, in Perig Yud Zion, per, per, sorry, per, Perig Yud Tes, Pasuk Yud Zion, in Pasuk Yud Ches, in Parshish Kedoshim, might you say, uh, Rabbein Shalom, um, please, please, please be welcome me for, for the suggestion. It's just a, my, my humble suggestion. Um, I'm having a hard time with Nakama and Natira. So could you put those two somewhere at the beginning of Bereshis? And then put after Rechamoicha somewhere at the end of Devarim and give me some space to recover. How do you put Nakama and Natira, don't go there, and then next you immediately switch to after Rechamoicha? How can you do that? And the Rebbe Shalom's answer is very simple. Riyati, you, you, you have a fundamental misunderstanding of reality. You think that the nakama you experience against those who've really hurt you badly is something that you're experiencing now. But guess what? That person hurt you in your perception uh, yesterday, whether yesterday is years ago or decades ago, and you would love the opportunity to get back at them. And then I'm telling you, Latita, and you're mistakenly thinking that that's also a feeling of, I can't wait, to, no, I, I will know, you cannot borrow my mower, or no, Natira is, yeah, you can borrow my mower, because I'm not like you, who wouldn't lend your ladder, so I'm clearly remembering and holding a grudge against you for it, says the Kaddish Baruch Hu, Rieti, you, you, you misunderstood me, you think that those are feelings that are deep-rooted, but guess what? Nikama takes place where? In my thought. Natira takes place where? It's a thought. So, how far am I away from the next thought? And the answer is, I'm one thought away. So says the Kaddish Baruch I'm trying to help you understand that I'm talking about your mind. And so I can actually ask you to switch from the karma and the tira and go straight into Vahafta Rekamecha. And do you know what the proof of that is, says Akadosh Baruch Hu? Read the last two words, because I'm signing off over here. 
Ani Hashem. Guess who designed your mind? Who created you? I did, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So I can tell you, you can go from Nakama to Natira and jump into Avas Yisrael because it's only one thought away. If a Rosh Gomor, we mentioned this last year, who everybody, Shulchan Aruch itself, labels as a Rosh Gomor, and you're standing and you witness this Rosh Gomor give a pruta to an Isha and tell her, Ahari up mekudeshasli, al menas she'ani tzaddik, and Gilin Hashas offers girsa tzaddik gamur, mekudeshas or eno mekudeshas? Is it a valid m marriage, yes or no? He says, I'm married to you on condition I'm a completely righteous individual. Yeah, mekudeshas, why? Safek shema hiru teshuva belipai. Because perhaps he had a thought of Teshuvah in his mind. Simon Lamad Ches, Sif Lamad Aleph, Evan Ezer. It's a Halacha Gemura in Shulchan Aruch. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu's reality is that my mind can change. How long does it take to change? One thought. How long is one thought? one split second. So the context here is that complaining is really a thought. Lashon Hara is rooted in a complaint. Because why am I saying Lashon Hara against you if not that I'm complaining about who you are or your behavior or what you said? Motsi Shemra is a complaint. Aynas Tvarim is a complaint. Sinna is a complaint. Once we understand that almost literally every single middle, Gaiva, why aren't you as smart as me? Why, aren't, why don't you look like, why don't you have a family? Like, what, what do you mean like me? Everything I have is a gift. So I'm not even owed what I have. And now I'm giving myself credit and what's wrong with you? That's a complaint. Complaining, kafi taiv, is the exact opposite of chesed oilam yibanen. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, built this world to be a world of kindness, of giving. And complaining is the exact opposite because it's saying, I don't have what I should have. We're not just talking about water and bread. We're, whatever it is that I'm complaining about, that I'm not as smart as you or intelligent or as good looking or as a beautiful family or financial resources or such a large home or a, 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 a cool car, or whatever it is that... I don't have your mind, I don't have your learning, I don't have your, your eon, your, your, your pilpul, whatever it is that I'm jealous of. Jealousy is in my mind, it's a thought. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu is giving us a vote of confidence by telling me, Loititar, don't bear a grudge, Loititar, don't take revenge. He's giving me a vote of confidence, Loititaturu Acharei Levavgeim, don't trust what you think, unless you're thinking what I'm telling you to think. Are you being done l'chavzchus? Yeah, I told you to be done l'chavzchus. That's a thought. That takes place in my mind. My entire life is constantly and completely and only experienced over here. So actually we live inside out. We don't live outside in. When I fall into the trap of Olam HaDimyon, this world which is an illusion, and the illusion is I think that the world is affecting me. How come you've got a beautiful family and I don't? Rabbi Shalem, why, why is that? Yeah, yeah, Rabbi Shalem, why is that? How come, I worked so hard to learn, I don't understand. That this person, like, it's, it's like he's a genius. And I wish I had his brains. Why don't I have his brains? It goes on and on and on. Eiv, whoa, Tzadik, Tam, Yasha, whoa. And no one wants what he went through. But it reached a point where he, the only thing he, he said, Rabbi Shalom, is it possible that when you created the universe, you mixed up the word Oyev, which means enemy, with my name, Eiv, and now I'm, I'm your enemy? So Rabbi Shalom says, Eiv, this is a fundamental misunderstanding of reality. You know why? Because I created the universe with 22 Oysias. Do you understand how many factors go into enabling life to exist on planet Earth? 
all the laws of physics, gravitational pull between the Earth and the Sun, the exact gravitational pull between the sun and the moon to enable there to be the oceans to redistribute the, the water through the, the waves. Do you, do you understand what it means for the sun to be 93 million miles away and the exact position that we are to enable the heat to reach planet Earth so we don't overheat or be underheated? Do you, do you understand how many factors I've created to enable you to have oxygen and water in plenty? And I created the entire universe and planet Earth and all your needs with 22 ICs. Do you understand what, would, what calamity would have come about had I mixed up a Yud in a different word? So Kodesh Baruch is saying, Yaakov Avinu, I don't get you. What's going on over here? Yaakov is busy mourning his son Yosef. Yehuda is busy in a whole scandal with Tamar. Ruvain is busy mourning because he messed with his father's bed. And Yosef is mourning, is, is departed from his father, and the Medrash asks, what's HaKadosh Baruch Hu busy doing? While Yaakov Avinu is mourning, Yosef, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is busy preparing Yitziat Mitzrayim, the Geula, while Yehuda is in a scandal with Tamar Hashem is busy preparing Mashiach. And here I am complaining, Rabbein Shalom, why did you take this person from me, my favorite son? Why did you do this to my daughter? Why? And it goes on and on and on and on. And says Hashem, Kvetching is simply not reality. And he wants me to train over a lifetime in recognizing that Kvetching is a thought. And because it's a thought, you and I only ever live one thought at a time. Try it. Try having more than one thought in any one moment. It's impossible. You can't even live in yesterday because it happened already. I could reconstruct yesterday by taking a memory from yesterday's history and place it in front of me. Oh my gosh, that's traumatic. Oh my gosh, that reminds me that how I hate this person who drives me... I, and what ends up happening is, whatever I went through yesterday doesn't exist now unless I recreate it in thought. Is this making sense? That's why the word Avera is Lashon Ava. It's history. It happened already. And Hashem wants me to know Teshuvah is real. How long does it take to do Teshuvah? I'm one thought away one second away. And if I fall after I did Teshuvah, how far away am I from doing Teshuvah a second time, a third time? And one thought away. Never more than one thought away from turning a kvetch into gratitude. A bakasha for rachamim. A reminder that that's not what I was put in this world for. Kvetch number four. We complain about food again. We're sick and tired of the man. What does Hashem do? Sends us the Nechashim. Thousands of Jews perish. We're still somehow not getting it. We're st we don't even see the midah connected midah that for my mouth complaining, just like the Nachash complained in the fact that he wanted Chava and get Chava away from Adam, Meaning he wasn't happy with who he was and what Hashem gifted him. And so what he was, he lost. He lost the status of almost being a, a Baal Bechira. He lost the status of having legs to be mobile. And the one he wanted, Hashem said, Nashim especially will hate you and despise oh, snake! Will hate you. Betachlis asinah. Kvetching never works. We complained about the lechem halakokel. One second, I gave you man. It tastes anything you want, any texture, any taste. And now you're telling me you're sick of it? So let me send you what you've created. And now come out the Nechashim and they start with these serpents.
poison that I can't recover from. And I don't get it. Because the biggest complaint comes with the Miraglim. You've got to be joking. You've got to be joking. I've taken care of you in the Midbar. I, 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 I spoke to you at Hasinai. I took care of your enemies. Um, and, and now, out of, the, out of these Miraglim, you actually believe that I'm going to bring you to a land that I promised you would be a land flowing with goat's milk and, and the honey of dates, and, 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 and you believe their lush and horror against my gift to you? Okay, you're crying tears, Bechinam, I'll give you reason to cry. And now that date is reserved for payback by Sushan, by Shani, Inquisition, Crusades, etc., etc. And what was the Chet of the Miraglim? Yes, Lash and Hara. What's the problem with Lash and Hara? It's a complaint against God. That's the problem. How far am I away from closing my mouth? I'm one thought away from switching the conversation. I'm one thought away from saying, I don't want to go here. It doesn't pay. It never pays. My business is to live inside out. That means I'm not here to change anybody. It just never works. And our greatest personalities live that way. Sari Menu, it's amazing. And Rashi, quoting the Medjus Rabbah, pounces on the irregularity of the Pasuk. How do you, how do you say of Sare Menu that um, her, her, this is a, the days of her life, and then you tell me it's 120 and 7 years, these are the years of the days of life? You, you just told me at the beginning of the Pasuk you're talking about her life. So Rashi quotes the Medjus that says, be to tell you it makes no difference where you look in her life, it was all equally Kulan Shavin Lataiva. Rabbeinu Shalelam, Chazala, the mouthpiece of MS, of reality, kidnapped twice as Lataiva? She went through the same Ra'av famine as Avram Avinu when they arrived in Eretz Canaan. She was barren 90 years. This month, oh no, it's so blood. Oh no, and again, this month, this month, this month. This goes on for years, decades, decades, decades. She's finally 90 years old, which she has a child. She's barren 90 years, and you tell me, Kulan Shavin Lataiva? Sorry, Menu, how could you say that? And you know what her answer is? Stop looking at the world outside in. You're looking at what happened to me. But if you ask me what was happening inside of me, what was I saying about what's happening to me? Kulan Shavin Lataiva. I grew by asking HaKadosh Baruch Hu for more Rachamim. Even the time, says the Chidush Harim, that she laughed. You remember when she laughed? When she was told she was going to have a child? Sorry, I'll translate myself. She laughed. Do you remember when she laughed? Okay, now you got it. So comes along the Chidush Harim and... How is it that when she's accused of laughing, why did you laugh, Sarah? And she, what was her answer? I didn't laugh. Whoa, 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 one second, one second. The Torah is made, testifies, you laughed. So then how can you, in the next Pasuk, deny when you asked, why did you laugh? And you say, I didn't laugh. We just wrote down that you laughed. How do you get away with that? Says the Chidush Arim, she was so aware of her thoughts. She caught herself in a second and hopped. Why am I laughing? All my life I've been praying for this moment. And then when she's accused of laughing, she's like, oh, I didn't laugh. Oh, that's the old Sarah. That's not the real. That's, that's yesterday. I'm one thought later already. Claims the Kedusha Rim, that's the Rambam. That, was, that I'm, if I do teshuva, I'm supposed to look at myself as though I'm a different person. And he says, that's the meaning of Shinu Shem. I should change my name. He says, not literally, but I should look at, oh, that's, that's the old Sarah. She was so aware of her thoughts. Kulan, Shavin, Lataiva was her reality. David HaMalach suffered more than Eiv. Eiv suffered the most in a 12-year compressed period of time. But nobody, say Chazal, suffered more than David and Melch over a lifetime. 
And yet he was capable of coming back to the same Shaviti Hashem. Lenekti Tamid, I do! Hashem, really? You're grateful? Why? Kitai! Because Hashem's good! How good? Oh, when I start counting how good, Le'olam, Chastai, it's unending, unlimited. And he was capable of going through a child who would usurp his authority, Adonijahu, of Shalom, rebelling against him. A father-in-law who only tried to assassinate him several times. His own, fa- his own father and brothers who were concerned that if whether he was a Suffolk, a Mumser, or whether he, uh, he suffered so much all around. But who was he inside? What was going on inside? He lived life inside out. That's reality. Hakol b'dei shemaim, chutz miyirat shemaim. This is all that, there's only a relationship with ourselves and HaKadosh Baruch Hu through the power of thought. Chazal tell us, fetching is never, never works. Ein shalom moitzi mentoich riv. Complaints, riv, sikhsuch, conflict, never will shalom come from that. And complaining is a massive source of causing a rift, causing riv, causing conflict. And I'm, I should never get down on myself, no matter how many times I've fallen into kvetching, because Hashem says, the after recha kamoicha is only one thought away from the tira and the kama. And that's only one posuk after Lotisna Itachichal Bilvavecha, and in the next posuk, love your neighbors yourself. He put them next to each other because it's possible go, to go from sinner to Ava in one thought, in one moment. That's the power of Bihira, of choosing a different me. I'm letting go of the fetching. I'm letting go of the sinner. And when I do fall, when, not if, when I do fall, start again. The next thought. There's much to be said on this. I'll close on the following. A Nisayan. Gentlemen, ladies, gentlemen, I'm assuming there's nobody in this room who has a Nisayan when they wake up in the morning to put on tefillin. Am I accurate? Do you know why you don't have a Nisayan to put on tefillin? Because you don't think about not putting them on. You probably do not have an assign about not eating something that's not kosher because you don't think about eating something that's not kosher. Do you know where we do experience an assign? When we think about how hard the assign is and it becomes an assign. Please be mindful me for using this as an, a dogma. Here's, here's my assign. A Kaddish Baruch would never give us an assign that's heavier than we can carry. It's always perfectly measured in every sense to the family members, to our physical ability, our stress level, everything. But you know where the Nisayan starts to get really hard? Where, Rebbein Shalem, why are you doing this to me? I don't quite understand. You know, I don't think life is always that fair to me. You know, I'm finding, I'm really, I'm starting to really feel stressed. Actually, Rebbein Shalem, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? I can't think it anymore. Guess what's stressing? Guess what's the problem? The Nisayan is not the problem. It's the overweight thinking. Thank you. I'm, I'm adding on more than the Nisayan. And then I'm blaming the Rebbe Shalom. How do we know this is MS? Who's the person who injected in all of us their DNA so we could be Oymed bin Nisayan? Avraham Avinu, yeah, it is really Hashem. But Avraham Avinu, Nisnase Basara Nisyonis. The Ahmad Bekulam. What does Rashi tell us there? Look at the Rashi, fascinating. Perek Hey, Mishnah Gimel, Perke Avis. Shalohiher! Achari Midoy Savshla Kodesh Barhu. He didn't think! That's the heart. Avram Avinu had how many days in Lech Lecha to go from where he was to Hara Maria, which he didn't know where he was going yet. How many days? 
three days to think about the Tzivoy. What was he commanded to do? What did he think he was commanded to do? Sheikh Tisan. What was he telling everybody for the last hundred years? That there's one Rabbeinu Shleilam who's so loving, he doesn't need you to prove your loyalty by sacrificing children. What do you think he's going to think for three days? Is three days a long time to think when you're walking at the pace of a camel? That's a long time. And how was he Ahmed bin Asayan? Shalah hirhe. Acharav. He didn't think. It doesn't mean the thoughts didn't parachute into his mind, but here's where Bechira works. You don't always choose the thought that parachutes in your mind, but you do get to choose the next thought. And so he didn't analyze it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, why does Hashem do this to me? I can't believe it. But I've been doing this for 100 years, telling everybody, and I'm going to check my son, my only son, the one I love. This is for my wife's son. We've worked so, this is our only, he promised me a whole nation. Of this. The law here. He didn't think about not putting on tefillin. Don't think about not keeping Shabbos. Oh, Hatsala, there's an emergency. That's, there's nothing to think about. He said, Machal Shabbos is a mitzvah to save life. When something's clear, I don't have to think and analyze and analyze and pull the past into the present and suffer the trauma that I went through and go into more detail and more detail and analyze and analyze and water the weeds, water the weeds, water the weeds. We're all healthy because we're only ever one thought away from health, healthy thinking. One thought away from letting go of sinner. One thought away from letting go of kinner. One thought away from letting go of fetching about myself, about the world, about politics, about the community, about my friends, about my family. And the moment we stop thinking, we leave room for Kaddish Baruch Hu to send us the next thought of Menucha, of comfort, of Chizuk. I close. I want to share, and in closing, I apologize, I've gone over three, three, uh, three minutes, that I recent, recently read a book called The Exquisite Mind by a Terry and Brian Ruben, uh, Rubenstein. It had a profound effect on me. And she's a from... Uh, Balas Chuva in London. Met them recently, they came to New York to do a training. And it's based on something that people call three principles. It's a movement that's growing. But the concept that they're talking about is what I've been speaking about to tonight, is the power of recognizing that you only ever exist one thought at a time. And that by recognizing that as reality, it's not an intellectual recognition, it's an experiential recognition. The moment it becomes clear that we experience life one thought at a time, we are liberated to choose the next thought. But Colesman, it's my wife and my mother-in-law and father-in-law and it's my brother and my sister and it's my parents, the way they raised me, the choices they made. And whoever it is I complain and blame and accuse and deny, it's my fault, give excuses why it's everyone else's fault. I'm avoiding thinking. How can I change me? Because everything only really exists in how I'm thinking. Life exists inside out. So I wanted to tell you that one of her Talmidot, Toby Walzer, uh, through Feldham, I believe, wrote a book called the St uh, From the Storm to Serenity, where she talks about how this changed her going from deep depression after having two extremely autistic children and losing both her parents within a few months of each other, who she was deeply uh, 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 close to. She fell into a depression where the only, th only therapy that was recommended was ECT, which is a type of ele electro electrocution of the mind, of the brain, which, by the way, only has one major downside, which is the possibility of permanent memory loss. But other than that, it's, it can be very effective. You have to be super desperate to have your brain electrocuted. 
And she got a phone call from Mrs. Twersky, Rebson Twersky in Milwaukee, whose, whose husband uh, runs a center called uh, the Twersky Wellness Center, based on the same concept, that my mind is really everything. And the Kodesh Baruch the Tzelem Lokim, planted in us, gives us the innate ability to recognize reality is always inside out. So I wanted to mention uh, that uh, uh, those books are excellent, and uh, Ride the Wave by uh, Aviva Barnett, and there's a, a Rabbi Hanuch uh, Harris in Pasek who uh, helps people who uh, have all sorts of different problems understand these principles of how the mind truly works. Um, and these are people who uh, I want, I would just, I'm not getting paid for the advertisement, but just know that we're always one thought away from a new me. And then I fall a thousand times, I'm still only one thought away from changing. In the schus of that, we will be zeichet to much simch in our lives. Amen. I went over to you. Shame boss, and I have to give a big yasha kayak and uh to Rabbi Rieti for tonight's drasha. Inspiring dr- and thoughtful drasha. Our boy said the thought that you should be thinking right now is about which shear you're going to sponsor from the remaining shear of Irgin Shiritara and which rov you're going to thank and your ad in the journal for the upcoming dinner of Irgin Shiritara on August 15th. Call Irgin Shiritara at 718 851 8651 or email tape center at yeshivanet.com to have this great opportunity in Schuss of what's this Torah de Rabbim. CDs of tonight's show will be available shortly. Shakach, tell one for coming. Hananya Benakash, Emma Sagarish Bokul, Zakis, is the Shell Figure, Hemelam, Tara Mitzvah, and Emma, the Neuhoff, is the Mansidka, Yagdal, Tara Viade.